Hello, just wanted to give a quick comparison between the Juniper EX2200 and the EX2200-C. Both of these switches run the exact same operating system. I just got them today and got them set up and I'm doing some stress testing on them right now. But one of my big questions when I was looking to purchase these is what is the difference uh, between the two because the, the pricing is actually pretty similar despite the fact that the uh, uh, dash C version only has 12 ports and the regular 2200 uh, this model has 24 ports. Uh, both of these particular switches are non PoE um, but both models come in a PoE version as well and then the bottom switch the, the regular 2200 you can also get in a 48 port PoE and non PoE version. So altogether, you're talking about six different versions of the 2200 class of switch. The biggest difference between the two um, is obviously, you know, the form factor. And the top one is fanless. And so it's very good for harsh environments where you don't want to be sucking a lot of dust into it and things like that. Um, they don't come with a whole lot of accessories or anything like that. The regular 2200 comes with regular rack mounting um, kit uh, for the sides there. The, the 2200C, however, does not come with anything uh, besides a power cable. Um, and I guess it comes with the regular uh, RJ45 serial cable with a DB9 end on it, which is kind of nice. And they also come with this nice little um, uh, protector to make sure that it does not accidentally come unplugged. So as you can see from the front of the switches, the uh, Dash C model um, has obviously the 12 traditional ports and then it's got a, two pairs of uplink ports. And you can choose from either copper or the SFP fiber ports right there and there. So it's one or the other on each of these pairs. So right now, obviously, I'm running both copper, gigabit, um, one to the other switch, one back to the core of my network. Um, you also have to the right of that USB port for uploading files to the device or entire configurations. Um, the top port there is the serial configuration port. They also have... It's kind of a combo port with a little micro USB port that you see right down here. But the documentation for this thing doesn't really recommend setting up a device or troubleshooting a device with that USB because you don't necessarily see all of the things going on in terminal. The bottom port is your dedicated management port. So that's a regular network port, but that's what you would use for your out-of-band management. And that's pretty much it for the front. We've got our indicator lights, uh, top left one just being kind of like system power, uh, top, or, uh, excuse me, bottom left one is your alarm status. Uh, I've seen three different states with this so far, uh, red, orange, and uh, green. I believe it's orange right now um, because I haven't set up, uh, you know, a dedicated management ID or something like that, but um, as long as it's not red, you're, you're probably okay. And then on the right-hand side here, you've got uh, SPD light, a DX light, or an EN light. And when you press the button here and you change between those, all that that does is it changes what your traditional ports, how they light up. And so right now, um, I only have something plugged into port zero. Uh, left light is always activity. The right light is what changes when you push that button. And so right now it's on... Uh, SPD, which stands for speed, and so I'm getting three blinks at a time, which means it's connected at gig. So that's all that that really is. Um, bottom switch behaves the exact same way. Obviously, we have twice as many ports. Uh, we have four uplink ports, but it's SFP only. There's no copper option there, so in this case, I'm just stealing one of the regular ports for my uplink between the two switches. And then you have a, a little more physical button but the same options here as we had on the other switch. Okay. 
So then the management and the console ports for the regular 2200 are actually in the back. There's also that U uh, full USB port back there. There's no micro USB port on this guy. Right next to it there is where you would plug in if you had a redundant power supply. Two fans. Well, there's, uh, there's also a slot for a third fan. Uh, I think that gets used when you have PoE or you have a 48 port switch. Um, one of the things I really like about this switch is it tones down the fans significantly if uh, you're not using CPU power on the device. So it's not at all disruptive in a, in a very quiet work environment uh, as, we're, as we are here. So that's a comparison between the two switches. As I get a little bit more involved with them, I'll probably post some more videos on some more advanced topics. But uh, hopefully this gives you guys a good start.